So we've been talking about um, the heart and its anatomy and how it works to deliver oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. Today I want to talk about the, uh, the vessel system that's used to deliver that blood. It's basically made of arteries, veins, and capillaries. So let's first of all understand what our definitions are. So um, this means, whoops, that's not going to work at all. Let's go ahead and try a better font here. So that means away from the heart. Most people think it means to deliver oxygenated blood, but it just means physiologically to go away from the heart. Uh, veins means to the heart. And capillaries are kind of interesting. We haven't really talked about them yet. They're extremely small. They are the smallest blood vessels, and they actually go directly to every single cell that's in the body. So to each cell, which is an amazing thing. I mean, there must be tons of them, right? And they're extremely uh, small. I think they're somewhat on the order of about 10 microns. And a red blood cell is just a little bit smaller. I think a red blood cell is something like 6 or 8 microns. So basically that means that every red blood cell has to go one at a time through one of these capillaries. And there's some great films that will show you that. Now since the whole uh, blood vessel system embryotically was just one lump of fetal dough at some point and then kind of stretched apart, it all has the same three layers, just like the heart has three layers. Mostly the heart is made of the middle layer, the muscle, which is the myocardium. But in case of uh, the blood vessels, the inner layer is uh, the tunica intermedia, or what is called the endothelial cells. So I imagine that a uh, blood vessel is a pipe, and you put your finger into it, the, where, like where the blood is flowing. The part of the pipe that you're touching would be the inner layer, and that's the tunica intima. Uh, these endothelial cells are basically one cell layer thick, and the reason they're that way is so that oxygen can freely go back and forth across it. The second layer, the inner layer, is called the tunica media, and that's made of smooth muscle. And uh, smooth muscle, we haven't talked about it yet, but is involuntary muscle, so we don't have control over it, so you can't consciously tell your blood system to pump. Um, and then the outer layer is simply a protective coat made of connective tissue, and that's called the uh, tunica adventitia. Okay, let, let's take a look at these guys here. So over here, this is an artery and this is a vein. They tend to be adjacent to each other, although they're running in different directions here. And if we could make maybe like a T-table here. So if you make a T-table and label artery on one side and vein on the other, uh, let's just tick off here a couple of things which are really different about them. Well, first of all, you can see the shape, right? The uh, artery tends to be circular, round, and this guy has kind of a funny shape like that. Um, I know sometimes they say elliptical. Pretty much in uh, biology, we would refer to that as an oblong shape, right? Uh, the second thing you could th see is that the opening of the artery tends to be much smaller, right, than the opening of the vein. The vein is much bigger. And the reason why that is, is because the smaller the opening, the higher pressure you're able to maintain. So we could say then a third difference between the two is that uh, arteries carry blood under high pressure and veins carry blood under low pressure. Uh, a really interesting thing is let, let's look at those three layers, right? So let me see if I can get a different color up here. Let's see, is yellow going to come up here? So let's look at the muscle layer here. That's the tunica media. And that's this guy here. Uh, yellow doesn't work out very well on me on that. Why don't we try, ooh, how about brown? Excellent. So let's look at brown. So if you look over here, right, this is a very thick muscle layer it's got in here. But if you look over here in this guy, it's not quite as thick. Okay? So we have a much thicker muscle layer in the arteries. Why is that? Well, even though blood is being pumped out by the heart, uh, as it gets farther away from the heart, we lose pressure. So the arteries actually will pump the blood themselves. So they keep squeezing, 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 pushing the blood through. And it kind of squeezes through almost like a wave system like that. We would call that peristalsis, but we don't need to know about that. 
Um, so let's take a look now at uh, schematic of the two. So here would be the artery over here, and there's our vein over here, right? And uh, so we talked about how the middle wall is much thicker over here, but there's something else we can add to our T table, which is really interesting. What's going on down here in the vein? Uh, let me see, should I push that out of the way? We can't really see it there. What's going on down there in the vein? Let me use a smaller font here so you can see what I'm talking about. There's something inside the blood vessel. That actually is a valve. Veins have valves and arteries don't. And the reason why they have valves is very interesting. Um, at that point, uh, where we're very far away from the heart, we've lost a lot of pressure of blood. Veins don't have much pressure. So how does the blood get back up to the heart? Think about it like this. Suppose that this is a vein, right? And there are valves in between it that kind of compartmentalize the vein, okay? And blood is going back through like so. Well, what happens is this. Blood goes through into this chamber, and then this closes off, and then it goes up again, and then this closes off, and then it goes up again, and this closes off again, like an elevator going up floor to floor to floor. And little by little, the blood gets all the way back to the heart. This is exactly how trees are able to get blood hundreds of feet, not blood, excuse me, I get water hundreds of feet up there. Same idea of compartments, and they have valves also. This also explains to us sometimes our legs, for example, will fall asleep when we are not moving around, because since there isn't a lot of pressure pushing the blood, uh, if you're just sitting there, the blood just kind of sits there and it doesn't have a chance to go through the valve. And uh, what happens when it gets to sleep is that you kind of try and shake your leg to do some muscular, skeletal muscular action to try and push the blood and force it through the valves there. And you get that kind of funny tingling feeling because blood carrying oxygen hasn't really been delivered as it should be. Okay, now let's see if we understand. Now this is a little bit of science called histology. Histology has to do with the staining of tissue slides. And so here we see a blood vessel which has been stained. Uh, very nice red and you see the purple nuclei in there. Very good. Okay, there's our blood vessel there. Now we're looking at a cross-sectional view so you're kind of looking into it. And this whole area in here, right, is actually the inside of the blood vessel. That's where the blood cells would be flowing. Don't see any blood cells right now in there. What do you think? Is this a artery or a vein? Well, you can definitely see that the shape is not really circular. It's more oblong, right? Uh, but the real giveaway, if I could get another color here, is what do you think this guy is here that's inside the blood vessel? That actually is the valve. So by seeing that valve in the middle of it there, I know that this must have been a vein. Here we go. Let's try this. Now here you see two blood vessels side by side. There's one. There's one over there. They tend to be side by side, so they're adjacent. Who's who? Well, this one looks bigger, an oblong shape. This one looks round, circular. By the way, see how there's a single layer of endothelial cells right there? There's the nuclei right there. So this guy must have been the vein, and that must have been the artery. And hey, by the way, we did catch a single red blood cell going through there. Great. And all this stuff around here is basically just connective tissue. I'm going to guess that it's fat. Fat tends to have a lot of blood vessels. Hey, by the way, over here, there's a smaller pair over here. There's another one side by side. Who's who? Once again, that's a little artery. That's a vein. And the reason why this is kind of filled in here so I think it's actually filled with red blood cells. That's what all these guys are over here. And that concludes our discussion on the blood.